I actually decided what I wanted to speak. And I looked at my watch, it was 11.56 on my watch, which is 12 minutes fast. So I'll let you figure out how much preparation I have. I'm handing everyone a copy of uh, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. Um, I'll try not to read from it as much as possible. That's a moment. Earlier we did the Pledge of Allegiance and the topic that I'm going to be speaking about is, to me, in my opinion, what it means to be an American. And then we start with the Declaration of, the, of uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. And that's, that's a good start. I think this document here is what really defines it. And particularly, there's a paragraph here that says, if you go to page Page 9 in the Declaration of Independence book here. Second chapter down, it says, We hold these truths to be self evident that all men are created equal and are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I feel that to be an American is to embrace the principles that were outlined by the people who wrote these, uh, these documents. So what, what does that mean? What does that mean? Uh, if you're an American, are you natural born? Are you a citizen? Right? Technically, that's, that's it. But embracing these principles, I think what it really is what defines me as an American. I think that they got it right. A lot of the people who contributed to writing uh, this document, I would consider to be geniuses. Benjamin Franklin, if you look at his works and the writings that he's done, uh, you know, even how many years ago is that? Over three, four hundred years ago, and this stuff really makes a lot of sense in the principles that can be applied uh, even today. If we go forward to page 43, we're going to start seeing amendments to the Constitution. Again, these are things that we as Americans define our freedom by. Freedoms that in most of the rest of the world, the citizens don't have these freedoms. A lot of people think that the documents here are what give us our rights, and that they come from what was written in this document. I think that what was written in this document and what it says on page 9 is that we are endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights. So this document is just acknowledging the rights that we all have. First of which is freedom of speech. <laughs> right? A lot of us take that for granted. But anyone can come here and say just about anything and with no recourse or repercussion from the government. And there are other places in the world where what you say can get you put in prison forever or, or killed. Right? So that's our number one freedom. The second one, which I try to avoid speaking about it in this close enough to use because we probably do a whole meeting talking about that. Uh, the second amendment, uh, 27 words. Well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state and have people to keep their arms not Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. We have the right to defend ourselves. In a lot of places in the world, people don't necessarily have the right to, by way of arms, to defend themselves. In fact, uh, we speak to some people in the UK and other places, they feel like they're actually committing a crime by having the means and the ability to defend themselves. They rely entirely on the government for their personal protection. Uh, we don't. In fact, our Supreme Court has decided that the government does not have the duty to give individuals security. So your self-defense is your responsibility. The third one is pretty obscure. It just says the soldiers cannot take up residence in your house unless to by Congress or something. So I don't know when uh, in our lifetime we've ever had that problem. Probably was a problem back then, so it's good that they acknowledge that. The fourth one, the right to not be legally searched and seized. I was watching The Quantum of Solace, the James Bond movie the other day, 
And there was a scene where David Bond gets pulled over by the Italian police. They check his paperwork. Okay, paperwork was fine. Open the trunk. And what do you do? There's some countries where cops say you open the trunk. That trunk is getting home. Here in the United States, though, you can consent or not to be searched unless there's probable cause. And again, that's something that I think many people may take for granted, but again, in most of the rest of the, of the world, you don't necessarily have a right to, you know, I, I actually told the uh, special agent in charge in the New York office of the FBI, wanted to search my car for something. And I said, I will not consent to a search. So, okay. And they didn't search. Okay. So it, it, it doesn't work. The Fifth Amendment is also another one that we enjoy and hopefully don't take for granted. But we are not, not compelled to be a witness against ourselves in the legal procedure. So when you hear the cops say, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. Well, that's your Fifth Amendment right to not say anything that could be used against you. Unfortunately or fortunately or not, in the United States we have so many laws that prosecutors, that's their job to know, but we don't. And we don't know ways that we can be ensnaring ourselves by speaking. And they're telling you up front that anything you tell us, we're going to use against you. So, not sure. We need to enjoy that. I'll end on the sixth. Sixth Amendment is, is essentially the right to due process. We have a way that our court system and our legal system works. And each and every one of us are entitled to that. And I think that as Americans, uh, we need to really appreciate that. And that's why I gave everyone this book. And I will task each of you to read it and be familiar with it. Not knowing your rights is the same as not having it. Mm -hmm.